uh, one of the student response cards. Thank you. All right, uh, this question I'll be addressing as the skeptics, I'll be addressing Dr. DiCarlo, a uh, question from a student. This is from uh, a student, uh, and he asks, Dr. DiCarlo, you argue that a lack of historical evidence to corroborate the existence of Jesus should cause us to deny his existence. Does the failure of history to recognize a fact automatically render said fact untrue? Consider Columbus's discovery of the new world. Yeah, say, say that last part again. Does the... Does the failure of history to recognize a fact automatically render said fact untrue? Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, no, it doesn't. Not by argument. But basically, uh, this is known as a responsible use of what's called argumentum ad ignorantium, which is the idea that we, a claim is made, we search out evidence for that claim, when we don't find the evidence, we can say that the claim has been falsified. You know, it would be an interesting world if we had, you know, Jesus' diary, his actual physical body, you know, photography and video was invented at the time and somebody saw his ascension and, you know, him rising, you know, from the, from the tomb and all that kind of stuff. But those things didn't exist. Therefore, what is the more responsible thing to believe? That a paucity of historical corroborative information or a lack thereof um, indicates that Christ actually did exist? or that it's more in favor of that he didn't exist. And I think using what's known as the argumentum ad ignorantium uh, approach, it is a more responsible move to say, okay, if he had existed, then we should expect to see a lot more historical evidence. Yeah. I'll give the two other panels an opportunity to respond if you wish, uh, but I'd ask that it would be about 30 seconds each. Yeah. For my, for my 30 seconds, uh, I, I, it seems to me that Dr. DiCarlo is using the term ad, uh, argumentum ad ignorantum in, in the opposite way. It, it usually, people, this is recognized as a fallacy in thinking when somebody says, because we don't know, it couldn't be true. Yeah, it could, but, but you mentioned, you can say that this is an exception, mm -hmm. and there is an exception here because we expect to find evidence and we do not find. But at the same time, you're falling into the fallacy of equivocation as well, because uh, on the one hand, uh, you are using uh, Jesus Christ uh, as the fully developed concept and saying that that does not exist uh, or did not exist and at the same time you are allowing for the possibility that a human being Jesus might have existed a Palestinian Jew 2000 years ago are you saying that no such person existed uh, personally I have no reason to believe any such uh, physical human existed and and I do mention that the argumentum ad ignorantium can be referred to if a person does set out to find information corroborating a claim and then does not find it. But of course I point that all out in my latest book, How to Become a Really Good Pain in the Ass. <laughs> you knew that was coming, didn't you? Tony, did you want to add anything Yes, to this? very quickly, Dr. DiCarlo, since you dismissed Jesus uh, as a non-historical figure, um, what is your reasons for believing that Aristotle and Plato actually existed? So much evidence about their lives can be found. How, how early is that evidence? Well, the fragments of, of Aristotle. What are the dates discussed? on those fragments? The dates. What's that? What are the dates on those fragments that the we have? The dates on the, on the fragments? Yeah. Well, Socrates died 399 BCE. And the earliest copy we have of Plato's writings, how old are they? Those? Uh, do you mean the tablets, the fragments? No, no, the writings we have of Plato. How old are they? The, the earliest that we have. Of Plato? Yes. Well, those would be the fragments. Those would be in stone. Yeah. You do realize there are centuries away from Plato. The first uh, so, no, Plato's work about Socrates was literally in the... They, that's why they call them the yeah. fragments. They're broken yeah. bits of stone. Yeah. And, and they have been, the they earliest, have been carbon dated and they have yeah. been... But the earliest copies we have of Plato's works are centuries later, after Plato. Do you, well, no, there's commentaries about Plato centuries after, but we do have Plato's actual fragmented works carved in stone. So, really? Okay. Oh, yes, they, they do okay. exist. Wow. Yeah. You've got to send me that link. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I hope that uh, we will benefit uh, and become more enriched by hearing the three sides of this uh, debate. In my closing remarks, I'd like to uh, point out that uh, I feel that Dr. DiCarlo has made a consistent error 
Uh, and uh, I hope that through the Q&A, that could have been uh, revised, but it wasn't. You see, there is Jesus, uh, who is claimed to be a historical figure, and then there is the Christ of faith. Muslims and Christians believe that Jesus was the Christ. To say that Jesus existed in history is to make a historical proposition. To say that Christ existed in history is an anomaly. Because Christ is a figure of the faith, not of history. And Dr. De Carlo consistently said that the Jesus Christ of history did not exist, or something to this effect. So he's putting Jesus and Christ together as, as a historical proposition, which shows that uh, somehow the point was not really uh, explained to him. Uh, but uh, to explain it further, I feel that there is no a reason to discount the real possibility uh, that a human being by the name of Jesus lived in Palestine some 2,000 years ago being a Jew in a Jewish uh, environment. It is that historical person that Muslims believe was specially inspired by God to be a prophet. So we make a faith proclamation that that historical Jesus was a prophet. He was the Christ. Is there any reason for thinking that people invented religion due to fear of the unknown? Uh, that's possibly so, but if and if people invented religion for the wrong reasons, that does not mean that God does not exist. Because there could still be a God, and yet there could be people inventing religions for, I'm not pointing at Tony, inventing religions for all kinds of wrong reasons. Uh, and that was God would still exist. What reasons do we have for believing that God exists even though we do not see Him? First of all, the existence of this universe. This is something, and something doesn't come from nothing. That calls for the existence, as Keith Ward had said from Oxford University, a philosopher, uh, in, in his book, God, Chance and Necessity, either this came about by chance, which seems uh, rather ridiculous to conceive of it so, or it came about by some kind of necessity, which means that there are some Im embedded laws that ensure that this universe must exist with us in it, or third, that God exists and God brought this into being. To him the choice is clear and if we had more re time we would explain why that choice necessarily leads to God. It's either by chance or by necessity or by God and definitely it, God is the one who brought this universe into existence. Second, the universe appears to be fine-tuned to exist as it is, right from its very inception. There are certain mathematical laws which are known in the universe such that we have the universe existing as it is, without the law of gravity, and fine-tuned to be precisely what it is. Uh, electromagnetism, uh, the strong and weak nutri uh, nuclear force, and several other constants which uh, have been identified by astrophysicists, the universe would not exist. That calls for a designer, and we say that that designer is God. In the Q&A, I referred to the moral argument for the existence of God. Everyone agrees that good is good. Even Dr. De Carlo agrees that there is something called good, we better do what is good. Well. In, in, in agreeing with to that, you are agreeing to the metaphysical principle that good is something that not that we make up, but that exists outside of us, outside of human beings. Where is that good except in the person of God? And God reveals to us and inspires us towards that which is good.